Welcome to part four of Revit 2019 step-by-step -step house plan. Uh, right now what we're going to do, the last video we finished up with um, setting our elevations. In this video what we're going to do is divide our spaces. And uh, we want to divide them, we want them useful, useful spaces. We don't want any wasted space at all whatsoever. Uh, get the most human use out of every space in this um, uh, building and uh, you know of course where do you start well one thing you keep in mind is you keep in mind your building codes um, you know here in America uh, if you're one of my students we've already discussed this but your minimum room size is 70 square feet and obviously you want to go bigger than that on most houses the only time you only really want to make that is your minimum uh, which is what that code is it is a minimum standard um, but if you were building something very economical, uh, maybe apartments or something like that. Um, but in this case, we do want to go larger than that 70 square feet that is recommended by code. Um, and I had that in mind when I was drawing out my footprint. And uh, I knew that over on this, these two sides, these two wings, we're going to have something to do more than likely with bedrooms uh, and sleeping areas. So I planned the width here based on an idea of the size I wanted these rooms to be. So this one's 12 feet. This one's a little bit wider. Um, what I shoot for is I shoot for about 10 feet across any front area like this. It's going to be designated for rooms. And um, <clears throat> next what I want to do is I want to put some horizontal uh, divisions in here. And we're going to change our wall type. We're just going to use regular interior walls. Uh, so I'm going to click on walls, pull down my wall selections, and we're going to go with a, um, with a four and seven eighths inch partition right here. And we're actually going to click on edit type. Now, although it is a four and seven eighths inch partition, okay, yeah, they do have metal studs in here at three and five eighths. Um, I'm just going to change it to softwood lumber. I'm going to leave the size, which is close enough to half an inch, three and five eighths. I mean, we're looking at, um, what is that, an eighth of an inch over three and a half. Okay. And we're going to click OK. And then apply and OK. Um, so now we have our interior walls. These are interior walls that have drywall on both sides with framing members in the middle. Um, now I'm going to use a technique um, that you may or may not have heard of. If you, uh, this is a good book that you can uh, read. Let's see. I hope I don't get in trouble for showing this on YouTube. If you can see that, it looks like it's very reflective on the uh, the camera. There we go. Architectural principles in the age of humanism. Humanism by Rudolf uh, Wittgover. Um, I would suggest anyone studying architecture to read that book um, and uh, but what he discusses he, he, he goes over or discusses some things that he had kind of discovered about uh, an Italian architect named Palladio um, and uh, what he discovered as he was discussing or studying this guy's architecture in Italy now this is a Palladio was a Renaissance era uh, architect and uh, what he discovered studying him is kind of the layout, the method of his, you know, laying out walls and rooms and things like that, or what I call dividing spaces. So if we're going to divide spaces, let's start. Um, we're going to start with these interior walls. And what I'm after here is I'm after kind of a grid um, type appearance. Uh, and of course, it won't stay that way. We'll make changes as we go along. So I need to find a distance. I want to get about 10 feet, or let's see, probably not on this side. Let me do some measuring. Find out where that is at. So about right here is 10 feet. Um, and yeah, I think I want to do that. So I'm going to start this wall at about 10 feet. It may not be exactly 10 feet. I'm just going to go right through here. Okay. Um, I am going to put another wall. Okay, right through here, and I'm actually going to kind of continue that. Uh, I'm not going to continually draw it because this is exterior wall. I'm going to put a 
the wall right there. All right, then I'm going to come up, um, and again, I'm just kind of thinking, I want to split this in half. No particular reason, but I know that I'm going to have, uh, I kind of have an idea of the rooms I'm going to have in this house, such as sleeping rooms and utility spaces, service areas, uh, you name it, living spaces and all that. Okay, so, so I'm working on this thing here, and I've got this idea going on, and I'm going to add some vertical gridding like so to my house plan. Okay, so those are my walls. You can also use another function inside of Revit where you actually put uh, grids, you know, graphic grids out without drawing walls and you can use those. But I just go ahead and go off of the, the walls for myself. Um, so this is what I was talking about. This is what uh, Vitkover had discovered about uh, some Palladio architecture is the way that he divided these spaces and he found this common pattern and this is basically what this is based off of is that common pattern of dividing spaces. So I've got some interior walls, um, I've divided my spaces and now what I need to do is start turning these into usable spaces. Now obviously this right here is going to be my living room right in here. Um, I might, let's see, I might make this an office, and these could probably be two bedrooms, a bathroom would have to be in the scenario over here somewhere, or let's see, I might make bedrooms up here, I think I'm going to do that, I'm going to put some bedrooms up here, uh, master bedrooms up in here, um, you know, separate those from the minor rooms, and uh, go from there, so, but this right here will get you started, um, I've got rooms, they definitely the sizes of them definitely meet code, so I don't have to worry about that. They're of a desirable size. They're not too big and they're not too small. Let's look at the size of these rooms. And I'm going to click on this room tags over here. Let me show you how I did that again. Okay, room tags right here. Or room. Don't, don't do tag room. Just do room. And uh, I'm going to go over here to edit type. And I'm going to say show area. I'm going to put a check mark right there. So I want it to show the area. So we can look at these and it will calculate the square footage. And you just go and click in each room and it puts a room tag in there. Okay, so you can see the square footage. You can see that everything's running around 100 to 150, or actually up to 175. For those that might be kind of big, um, I may end up re reducing the size, or actually the, some of that space will be taken up by closet space as well. Um, so you see these are kind of the general sizes. If you come up with and you're, you're designing your own design, you have some rooms that are 500 square feet, that's probably a bit too much, uh, depending, unless you're designing a mansion. But for this exercise, we are not designing a mansion. We're designing a functional, usable, you know, uh, middle class house. All right. So that's how my rooms are set up. Next thing I do is I start working on traffic patterns. How am I going to send traffic through this building? How am I going to give them access uh, to each one of these rooms? So I'll show you how I think through that in the next video.